What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, back with a regularly scheduled episode and a lot of different things of that. So I'm going to make this particular episode my Halloween episode just because of the film review right off the, right off the top and then the return of a uh, zombie show and all of that and then I'll round it out with an update for a TV show I'm watching and the video game that I've been playing so with that being said Saw X the latest film in the Saw franchise is now available for streaming so I ended up buying it like I did all the rest of them just because I'm a fan of the franchise and I thought I'd give it a watch um, I did read the summary in this case just to get a general idea of what it would be about and is, as it turns out, this film actually takes place between Saws 1 and 2. Um, I don't remember much about the second one except for, I think it was a detective and his son and everybody being um, in a house and they have to escape. So I thought this particular one would be of note. Also because they cover um, more about John Kramer's treatment and why he was doing what he was doing so it doesn't necessarily explain what happened in the first one but i think they explained that in the first one as well just as far as his cancer and the treatments and the value of life and all of that stuff so overall this film was particularly good um the games were not as good as for example the first one or didn't seem as well thought out but when you consider that in this case for Saw X he is working with a larger group of people whereas in the first one it was just two people it does make sense because it's hard to make an intricate game and um have that many people that many moving pieces have them all set up to be tailored to each one of them but it does actually work to kind of round out what happens in Saw 2 because you have all those different groups of people you have to tailor make the games for them uh, you have to know their backstories and how they interact with each other and all of that so it does make me want to go back and watch Saw 1 and 2 just to see how well it ties together for that time frame but Overall, it was well done. Uh, we do realize that he's part of this um, therapy group as far as dealing with cancer. He learns about a miracle drug that could potentially save his life, but as it turns out, um, it was a, um, a scam and he got taken, especially by the other guy who pretended to be cured by it and then dealing with that game. So even though the, the game at the end doesn't didn't work exactly how they expected it to, it was a learning experience, but they, he actually did have it planned out to um, have an escape for himself, but then also account for what's going to happen. So the line that he says is that um, she's ultimately going to betray you. You just don't know it yet. Um, I figured that was going to play in somehow that the guy and the late, the doctor lady and her boyfriend were going to betray each other. And I wasn't sure how that was going to play out, especially since... Um, they put John in his own trap, so I was wondering how he was going to have a counter for that, so I thought that was good. Um, having Amanda in the film, um, prior to all the stuff that happens uh, later in the film with her taking his place, so um, all in all, it were, even though it was a sequel to Saw 1 and a prequel to the rest of the franchise, it does also work as a prototype to the rest of the games that they are expand or in that the rest of the games that were expanded with more people didn't always have the perfect outcome that they wanted like this was a good beta test that how do you handle multiple people the having the jigsaw doll having things on the tape versus him saying it live uh, watching the games play out and all of that stuff so all of that was very well done in the film and then queuing up the jigsaw theme at the end of the film was a good touch i really liked that as well i was actually waiting for that to happen wasn't sure when that was gonna um come up and when it did i was thrilled with that so overall i actually like the film it feel, fits in well with the rest of the films and the franchise and all of that um 
And then the games were good as well. They were just as gory as the rest. Maybe not as much so just because, you know, it's a beta test, like I said. So they're not necessarily as gory, but ha do having the people do what they need to do um, was interesting. And then dealing with the morality of it was a interesting touch. And then, uh, for example, at the end of the film, when he's walking out the door with um, Amanda and the boy was an interesting touch. Like it was it left you with a sense of hope with him and all of that. So if you're a fan of the Saw films, and I definitely recommend watching it. If it's not your thing, then it's not necessarily anything too different. But then on the flip side, it's not necessarily as bad as the rest of them. So it's probably more closer on par with the Saw 1 rather than the rest of them. But there are definitely a lot of gory bits. So if you're squeamish with that sort of stuff, then um, it's not going to be too far off. Um, so with that being said, um, this past week we have the return of the final episodes for Fear the Walking Dead. So in this case it was season 8 episode 7, Anton, so it's kind of an, a catch up episode. We have um, Alicia's mom finding um, uh, what's, his, uh, what's his guy, the guy that always betrays them. Now he's going under the name Anton, he has a son and... Um, I don't know if his boyfriend or girlfriend, but basically I'm going to say his boyfriend because I don't know the dynamics of their relationship, but his boyfriend, um, they're living in this hotel, helping people as a passageway, kind of as a halfway home kind of to help people, you know, so if they've been bitten to survive, to recuperate and kind of rebuild um, what, ha what he had in the tower. So while that was kind of interesting it was kind of a regurgitation of what he had um in the tower and people were coming to him so it was kind of a continuation of that so i'm kind of curious to see what um is going to happen in the, these last few episodes and then we have this guy show up that uh, madison knew about um who claims that he killed alicia so i don't remember and now i know that alicia was dying had the bite so i'm not i don't remember that she actually died so um, which on one hand in one of the previews for the um, upcoming episodes it looked like she was a zombie potentially but then in another episode I think she was alive so it might, I'm not sure if it's a flashback and she's actually a zombie or if that guy that Madison is gonna attack was just saying that that's Madison and it turns out not to be and she's actually alive and well so um, in general it was an okay start to these final episodes so we'll see how it goes. Um, much like um, the, for The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, I'm kind of hoping that they tie this into what um, happened to Rick and all of that story arc, the stuff with the Commonwealth and um, where Alicia is. Hopefully she did get better and those are the people who found her. So we'll see kind of what happens. I'm keeping an open mind just to see how it goes, but um, not too much to say there yet until I want to say the end of the um, season. But... We'll see how it lands and how they finish off the show, um, but I'm kind of curious to see what goes on there. Um, I've also been watching Stargate Atlantis, so I'm almost done with season three. I got a couple episodes left for that, so um, I anticipate next week having a review for that and having started um, season four and kind of see where we go with that. Um, and just as a side note, just because I thought I'd share this, I got an article about don davis and his impact on stargate sg1 so some he makes an appearance i guess he in i think it sounded like the season finale for stargate atlanta so something to look forward to in, in season five but uh we're at the point where um elizabeth and wolves or is under uh not really trial but being questioned for her methods for the wraith attacks and whether she should remain as the head of the atlantis expedition which I think it's going to tie in with the military presence uh, when Colonel Carter shows up but then ultimately leaves and all of that stuff. So um, we'll see what happens. But some of this stuff in season three that were, were the for the latter half of season three, I'm kind of remembering this stuff going on. Like I don't remember Dr. Beckett dying, but it also seems kind of familiar with the bomb that goes off when they're all taking the day off. And then now they're in this, um, I'm on the episode where they're in the um, underground facility for the drilling, the mine or whatever. Um, and it's not kind of familiar, so I may have seen the episodes or maybe like when, I, when it was on the sci-fi channel, I saw it there or something. So that's why it's kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of remembering less and less, but it's kind of familiar. So uh, maybe I did get through the end of season three and I stopped at season four. So we'll see 
as far as the rest of the show goes there. Um, but that's really all, that's all I got to say about that. Um, I'm kind of, it's kind of just that ongoing thing with the Wraith. They're, now that they're settled in the city, they met ancients who actually turned out to be replicators. And they had the city fly because of the star drive and all of that. So they know what the city's capable of and how modern it is. So um, we'll see what happens in season four and five. I don't legitimately remember much now. So we'll see if watching the episodes jogs my memory. And so to round out this particular episode, I am continuing to play Doom 2, the Plutonia experiment. I'm nearing the end of that game as well, so my final review for that will be next week. But overall, they're still good episodes. Or sorry, not good, but good levels and good gameplay. I'm really enjoying it. Some of these later uh, levels are getting a little bit more tough, and just due to time constraints, um, you'll see in the show notes that I did mention that I've turned on God Mode just because of fatigue, timing, and things like that. I don't have as much time to go and replay the level a bunch of times, look for all the secrets, and you know, retry stuff over and over for you know an hour, hour and a half, two hours at a time. So I'm keeping God Mode on, and I'm going through the level, progressing, looking for the keys and how to finish it. I'm not necessarily looking for secrets either, just because God Mode is on, so I don't have to worry about you know, armor and the soul sphere and all that. I'm worried more about getting, making sure I have armor to, or ammunition to begin with. So I'm kind of just making sure I have enough ammunition to finish the level and, you know, use the BFG on cyber demons and spider masterminds and things like that. But overall, the game is fun. It is a little bit harder than before, just because you instead of having, you know, one or two barons of hell, some rooms will pop up with like five or six of them and then some levels will have you know barons of hell with cyber demons or uh or barons of hell with a spider mastermind or a cyber demon and a bunch of anacroton anacrotrons and things like that so um it does have a lot of that variety of mix of the higher level um enemies of doom 2 along with things like shotgunners and um, arch vials and revenants all over the place and things like that so it does make for it to be a very interesting game if and so i can see why people say it's harder i am playing it on the easier mode so i can see why you know on nightmare or ultra difficulty how it can be that much harder of a game and how you have to be that much more methodical um so that's all there is for that so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that You can comment on this post on social media. All the links are on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. All the gameplay videos um, are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. And of course, if you help support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01, you get early access to the show um, and a free version of the show and all of that. So as well as the link to the video version of the um, episode so you can uh, get either version um, available when that post goes up. And as always, all the links to the stuff I reviewed are in the show notes, so you have easy access to that stuff as well. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.